Good morning, church. I uh, just want to welcome you all for listening to this uh, service. Uh, today is Pentecost Day, the 31st of May, 2020. And uh, we just want to thank God that uh, we are able to celebrate Pentecost Day uh, together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. And we continue to say, come Holy Spirit, fill us with your peace. Come Holy Spirit, unite us in our worship. Come Holy Spirit, raise up by your power. Come Holy Spirit, be part of our worship service as we gather, Lord, in your name, in the power of the Holy Spirit, to worship you. We bring gifts of speaking of listening, of prayerfulness, of knowledge, and of wisdom. May our gifts be united to honor you and may each of us receive from you that which we need. May you hear us, you speaking to us this morning. Pour out your spirit, loving God, that your sons and your daughters may hear your prophetic word. Pour out your spirit, Father, that your sons and daughters may know how to live according to your ways. Pour out your spirit, loving God, that your sons and daughters may worship you in spirit and in truth. Be with us, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. I will call upon your brother, Russell, to come and read the word of the day. Our reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1 to 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in their own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia Minor and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongue. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they've just had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews, all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I have to say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and the signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And that concludes the lesson. May God add a blessing to it. Amen. Uh, thank you, Russell, for the reading of the Word of God from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. We want to thank God for his Word. Let us pray. 
God, your love is unconditional. Your gifts are offered with measureless generosity. Your peace is all-encompassing. We are sorry for the times when we have put conditions on our willingness to care. When we have kept what we have for ourselves and refused to share with others. When we have failed to seek peace and have caused discord. Forgive us, restore us, renew us by your spirit of life. Holy Spirit of Peace, we pray for homes and nations where there is discord and conflict, especially during this COVID-19. A lot of homes are suffering from abuse. Father, we pray that pour your Holy Spirit to bring peace in these homes. We pray for those who live in despair, for those who can see no more purpose in their lives, for those who cannot see a way ahead, for those who feel completely alone. Holy Spirit, hear us and be part of these families. Be part of us, Lord. Bring units among nations. We pray for your church, for its ministry to the faithful, for its mission to the world. May the spirit of Pentecost breathe upon us that we may witness to the world the comfort, the meaning, and the love that you offer. You are our differences and make us one in you. Holy Spirit, hear us. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. This morning, I have decided to share with you on the theme on finding Pentecostal power on finding Pentecostal power. The disciples had been waiting so long for this. It was an interminable 50 days since Jesus had risen from the dead. It had been 10 long days since Jesus had ascended into heaven from that mountain side outside Jerusalem. And that angel had told them to go back to Jerusalem and wait. They had to wait again for what must have seemed like eternity to finally receive what they had been waiting for, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then it happened. In the midst of a sound of rushing wind with tongues of fire dancing on their heads, the disciples were suddenly able to speak in myriad of foreign languages. They were humble guerrillians. They were poor. They had not gone to school. They had not taken the latest bliss course in some foreign language. They were uneducated. And yet, they were able to speak in these foreign languages so proficiently that Jews from the far reaches of the Roman Empire who came to Jerusalem for the celebration of the Jewish festival of Pentecost were able to understand them. People from all over, from Pamphylia, from Mesopotamia, from Egypt, from all over the world, they were there listening to these disciples. They spoke of the might acts of God that God had done in Jesus, the Messiah, and how the ways of the prophet Joel concerning the day of the Lord and the end of the world were now coming true. It was strange, amazing, and what only could be called a miracle, it is no wonder that men were gathered there that they came to the conclusion that these people must be drunk. But in fact, they had received the promised Holy Spirit. They were not drunk. That is how Luke described the first Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. It truly must have been an extraordinary event. Here we are some 
2,000 years later gathered in this ordinary place, in this ordinary community, in this ordinary time, in ordinary routines of ordinary life. Whoever thought that today we will receive or listen to the Pentecost message from our own homes, and we want to thank God because God he allows something to happen. Today we need the favor, the fire, the tongues, the passion, the spirit of Pentecost. Today the Christian church needs a rebirth of the spirit. Where souls are on fire with the love of Christ. Where barriers are broken down and superficial divisions which sequester and divide people are bridged through a unit of the spirit. Where we pray with one accord. Where divisions are being destroyed. Today more than ever the church needs to recapture the fires of Pentecost. So that souls can break free from bondage and healing and deliverance. And the full power of God's anointing can be experienced in every medium, in every idiom. By people filled with the Holy Ghost. Madness. Too many churches, too many Christians today are devoid of the Pentecost. Because they are dry, stale. And discordant, where parishioners are in a somona blessed stupor, where worshippers' service are vapid, stayed and wooden, where the preaching is dull, flat, and insipid. Things have changed. Too many churches have become Muslims for the dead rather than Colosseums for the praise for a living God. They have lost the spirit of Pentecost, they have lost their enthusiasm, they have lost their joy for Jesus. Too many churches, too many people today, they don't talk about the Holy Spirit. It's something of the past. It's something of the past. But I'm saying we need to go back to the early church experience and we'll see things happen. Pentecost marks the beginning of a new spiritual movement in Christ, uh, in Christ. a movement based through the fires of the Holy Spirit. A movement is steeped in the spirit of hope renewal and spiritual transformation. It is a movement where souls are on fire with the passion for the Holy Spirit. And the church today more than ever needs to recapture that spirit. We need that spirit. If the church is to survive the next millennium, it must recapture some of the praise and the enthusiasm it had two millennia ago. The spiritual energy, the vitality of Pentecost has sustained the church through two millennia. What then is this Pentecostal spirit? What is it? First, it is the spirit of a people fully open to the anointing outpouring of the Holy Spirit. When we are open to the anointing of the Holy Spirit, that is what is needed as Christians. By entreating the Spirit to come in and have its way, which always culminates in the outward, emotional, enthusiastic expression of religious faith and belief. The point is not to maintain control cognitively, but to allow the spirit to come in, to express itself through the person. We don't need to control the Holy Spirit. We need to allow it to, to change us, to do what it's supposed to do. But many people, they manipulate the Holy Spirit. They want to take control of the Holy Spirit. If anything happens in the church today, someone is saying, uh, maybe he's giving a prophet or someone is speaking tongues. People look at the person with curious eyes and saying, what are you doing? But let us allow the Holy Spirit to take control of us. So the goal here is for each believer to clear oneself of all external restraints and worry so that the Holy Spirit may come in. Take up residence in the human soul and transport the believer into higher realms of spiritual consciousness and expression. This is achieved by opening the door to the Spirit and permitting it to come in and use the person reach a previously unrealized domain of spiritual consciousness. The spirit fear takes place uh, in believers to heights of mind, body, spirit, and soul, previously unattained. You will see things happen in your life as a Christian, which you have never done because it is because of the power of the Holy Spirit in you. You can't do certain things only which could be done by the Holy Spirit. It was because of the Spirit's anointing and because they were open to the spirit of outpouring upon them, that they were all able to glorify God. So this is the power of the spirit's anointing. Anointing is derived from the Greek verb creo, which means anointing or of oil gladness, which, uh, which corresponds to the Greek noun charisma, 
which is pouring out upon Oroto into from without. So this is one meaning of the word anointing. It is something that moves from without to within. From within to without. It is something conferred by God through the movement of the Holy Spirit. This charisma outpouring enabled these various groups to reach new power and heights in spiritual consciousness and belief. But it was because of their openness to the Spirit anointing and outpouring that the Spirit of Pentecost was achieved. What we need is the spirit of openness, receptiveness to the spirit of open outpouring, to the promise and capacity of the Holy Spirit to transport, translate and transcend us to the higher heights in our faith. Belief in the contemplation and expression of that faith. So the more we are open to the spirit's outpouring, the more we lose personal control and give control power and give control to the Holy Spirit. The greater is our knowledge and the power, the ability to express and interpret matters of the Spirit. Second, the Spirit of Pentecost affected unity and diversity by creating a common language of faith and belief. So although the believers were from many nations and with different tongues, the Holy Spirit united them into one body of believers by forging a common language of faith and belief. With so much fire, power, enthusiasm, did the people speak that observed thought that they were drunk on wine. The tongues of fire rested over each of them as they spoke in their various languages. Fire represents the Holy Spirit and purification. Now the power of Pentecost was realized, not only the fact that people from different nations and languages groups all express themselves differently and be understood in unison by the sheer power of the Holy Spirit, but also by the capacity of the Holy Spirit to unify them when they spoke different languages spiritually. So the spirit of Pentecost unified people not only across national language barriers, but also across barriers of spiritual meaning and consciousness, which had prevented them unit as one spiritual people. God knew that the spiritual language barriers to do more to keep people apart than the natural language barriers. Just so impossible to imitate or duplicate the events of Pentecost in our day. But we do know that God would like to send a fresh outpouring of his new wine into our thirst souls and refill us with his own dear divine self. It will take for us just what it took for those early disciples, waiting, praying, unit, obedience, and consecration to God's will. What made the Pentecost such a powerful experience is that the Holy Spirit was poured out on a mass aggregate, a congregation, a collective of people, not just individual. This means that the whole board of believers were immersed in the energy and power of the Holy Spirit. Can you conceive such power when true believers come together in one accord for Christ? Can you imagine the walls that are knocked down, the divisions that are mended, the strife and the impediments overcome for the glory of God? Those are the things we now expect in this church that is full of the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit at such a willing display of humility and obedience to the things of God? Can you imagine how winds swept and the earth shook with gladness and joy because finally the people came to gather of one mind and one spirit. That is exactly what is needed today. The spirit of outpouring and anointing. The spirit of people speaking in tongues of fire as a united entity for Christ. The spirit of consensus. The spirit of joy. The spirit of hope. The spirit of power. The spirit of love and heightened expectation of what God can do through the people of God. That is what is needed. So the spirit of reconciliation. The spirit of transcendence transportation and deliverance, the spirit of the power of the Holy Spirit. This is the spirit which gave birth to the church. The spirit is the power of Pentecost and is needed in our church and is needed in us today. It is redeeming, sanctifying, liberating experience which compels the people of God to reduce the things we have in difference rather than the things we have in common. This is the spirit of Pentecost, a spirit needed in our churches and the world today. And that is the spirit we need. Amen to that church. On this Pentecost Sunday, let us be filled with the Holy Spirit. What difference would that make for you? Let me suggest something. Paul says in Romans 8, 
The spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Sometimes we forget who we are. But the spirit in us testifies that I'm a child of God. So I know I am a child of God. This is because of the spirit. Sometimes it is hard to remember who you are. The stress of the day, the pressure of the moment, the sin of the hour, the tithe of the time can cause you to forget who we are. Paul says the spirit helps us when we do not know how we ought to pray because we cannot find the right ways to say and we forget the ways we think we know. The Holy Spirit connects with our spirit to remind us that we are the children of God. And the Holy Spirit affirms that. So the church and our faith should never say ought without immediately being able to say you can. I want to say to you today, you cannot by your own strength and your own power and by your, but by the Holy power of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to do it. On your own, you can't. Whatever it is that God is calling you to do and be in you, you can. Because it's not you, but the Spirit in you. You ought to be a better person. I have come to tell you today that the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be a better person. You ought to break bad habits. I have come to say to you today that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can break bad habits habits. You can break those addictions. You ought to forgive. I have come to say to you that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can forgive. You ought to love your enemies, said Jesus. I have come to say to you today that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can love your enemies. You ought to be faithful. I have come to say to you today that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can be faithful up to the finish. It is a lot like that with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God is not something we see, but something we receive. If we wait and pray, there will come a day when the Holy Spirit himself will come to us. Or may it happen to somebody who is listening to my message today. It may happen while it's a listen right now. I ask you, church members, did you have the Holy Spirit? Has it been poured out to you? Do not look for the spirit under your table in your house. All of you who are baptized have the Holy Spirit. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18, the spirit has been poured out on us, the old and the young, male and female. So we need to have that spirit because we've been baptized. Joel says that that must mean the end has come. We are in the end times. Believe it, friends. The technical term for this belief is realize eschatology the end time <laughs> what does this mean for us in our daily lives trying to cope with all the dead ends we and our society face being in the end times as we are you and I have the fresh start that we need the old has passed and everything is new Paul says that in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 how does the Holy Spirit figure in this Those of us who have been crippled by the past with no viable alternatives have been in bondage to our past, trapped by who and what we are. The impoverished segments of society have been enslaved by the past. But the good news of Jawel and his message about the end time is that we are no longer chained by our past. We are no longer chained by our past. Our past is gone. So don't look back. The Holy Spirit is a great agent of the new possibilities. By giving us the faith that throws off the old dead ends in favor of embracing the new creatures that Christ is creating you and me. In Ephesians 4 verse 22 and 24. So in what sense does the Spirit set us free? You need to get free from yourself since it is your sin that has gotten you in your problematic situation. You are only really free from those old destructive patterns when you want to do God's will. And the Holy Spirit is the one who makes you want to do God's will. And follow God's way. So do you get the point? Those of us trapped by our past, at the end of our hopes, are trapped by our own life circumstances and behavior. <clears throat> only with the fresh start can we get free. And the only way that will happen if we get free from ourselves and get wrapped up in God's ways is to listen and follow what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Don't be misled by a lot of philosophies that are coming up. Or listen to what God says to you. The Holy Spirit is God grabbing hold of us in such a way that doing God's thing is what we really want. 
When the Holy Spirit grips you, it is a whole new way of life. A fresh start. And you know, you, 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 may, you have to know it. That the Holy Spirit is in you. And the Holy Spirit is guiding you. So the Holy Spirit keeps you from falling back into the bondage by getting you in touch with a brand new creature that God has made you to be. Like Joel says, friends, take heart. The new day has come. You are free from the old chains that bound you through. Free to be the real new. You and to find your true freedom in serving God. You have been created to serve God and you need to have that freedom in serving him. So the Spirit of God wants to flood your soul with whatever it needs this Pentecost morning. Do you need to feel the rush? Do you need to feel the hush? It's yours. We need to recover our connection to the Spirit of Christ. So the first Pentecost may seem distant and remote, but Pentecost is here again. Pentecost is here. Can't you hear the wind blowing and its power in your midst? Can't you sense this fire burning, that burning zeal in our hearts to carry Christ and his love to the world? Can't you hear the voice in so many different languages? Our world speaks a multiple of languages. Not all languages like English, German, Chinese, but languages like Shon and Devele, and many others, but also the language of culture, different cultures, different values, and different points of view. As you go from this place out into the world and translate the love of Christ into a myriad of different cultures, worldviews, values, and perspectives, you are just like those disciples who spoke to so many language, different languages in the, that first Pentecost day. Do you see the multitude of rays that adorn the sanctuary today? Yes, red is the color of Pentecost. Red is the color of Pentecost because it reminds us of the power of the Holy Spirit that appeared in tongues of fire dancing on the hands of the disciples on the first day of the Pentecost, 50 days after Easter. Red is the color of Pentecost. The color reminds us that today, here in this place, it is Pentecost. It is Pentecost again. Let us go forth from this place and do what those first disciples did. Let us set the world on fire. Let us be holy arsonist. Let us make it be Pentecost again. Let us change the world. It is Pentecost. Yes, we need to. The Holy Spirit descend upon the church on the day of Pentecost. How can we be apath apathetic when the light of that is in the light of that event? The church needs the power of the Spirit today. You and I need the power as well. And that is still available to those who ask for it. The explosive power of the Holy Spirit. Receive it. You need to receive it. In your home, not somewhere else. In your home. If that is okay, start speaking tongues right now in your own house. If God allows you to do that. Because that is the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm saying, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, we cannot control what the Holy Spirit wants. And we cannot manipulate it. Let us receive the Holy Spirit. And run up with it. Let us share about the Pentecost. Let us tell others that Christ is is there. Let us tell them that Christ is with us. Through this Pentecost day, Christ is there. And I want to assure you that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you can do everything because it is not you who does it, but it is the Holy Spirit in you. So you have no control over it. It is the Holy Spirit that deals or that works in your life. May the good Lord bless you as you have listened to this message. If you need prayers, please contact me. If you need anything uh, like counseling, how can you get the Holy Spirit? Please call me. We can talk over it. I can help you. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, We come before you again. On those who feel alone and unloved, pour out your spirit, gracious Lord. On those who weep tears of anxiety, pour out your spirit, gracious Lord. Where there is conflict, violence, and strife, 
where people are suffering from COVID-19, pour out your spirit, Father. Where people are only interested in gain and those who are oppressed, pour out your spirit, Heavenly Father. We are here today surrendering our lives knowing that it is only through you the giver of the Holy Spirit who can help us to move on. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your church. Pour out your Holy Spirit in this world, in this nation. Be with us, Father. Let us receive grace. May the power of the Holy Spirit challenge you. May the peace of the Spirit comfort you. May the presence of the Holy Spirit enable you to live in love and service in the name of Jesus Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.